Okay guys, today we're gonna to be showing you how to set up your own unturned server. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get into the server, or if you're doing this from a server that you're hosting with OVH or in the cloud, or let's just say you're utilizing an old desktop, get onto that computer and you're gonna to wanna to go to developer.valvesoftware.com. This direct link will be in the description. First thing you wanna do is download Steam CMD because we're gonna need this to first download the server game files. And when a update comes out for unturned, we're we're gonna also use a batch file to update that server as well. So let's go ahead and click on this zip file here to download the Steam CMD. We already did that, so we saved it to our desktop. So let's go ahead and minimize this. Here we have that Steam CMD file. We're gonna go ahead and unzip this file, extract all. Then we're gonna drag this folder. So we're gonna drag the entire folder here into our local C drive here. Then there's gonna be a couple batch files that we're gonna need to create. Um, like I said, there will be a link in the description to download these batch files, or you can see them on the screen here. So here's the unturn update so this says update but it's also going to create that server for us so as you can see it's going to go to this path to get our steam cmd which is in our c drive here so you can see our steam cmd go ahead and run this now because it's going to download and make sure it's got the latest version of steam cmd and do a bunch of good stuff so go ahead and run this and while this is running in the background we're going to verify all of our settings here so we're going to do force install directory so it's going to create a new folder called unturned of course and then it's going to log in anonymously and then this is the app id for that game so like if you were trying to install a csgo server you know that might be a different app id so same thing with gary's mod so if you want to install other servers you can actually use the same script to install other theme games as well so this is all correct so we're going to go ahead and close out of this we're just waiting for this to finish updating here and then we'll go ahead and run this update batch file that i created and then we're going to need a second batch file here that i'll show you in a minute once we get our server uh, created that we're going to need so you can see our update is not complete so let's go ahead and close out of that so once you have this all done then we can go ahead and double click on this batch file and then we'll have this over here and you're going to see it's going to create that folder unturned you can see it created that folder you can actually click in there and you can actually see the progress so it's going to be downloading all the files you're going to need to run a server for unturned so let's go ahead this can take some time this could take you know 15 minutes if you have good internet connection it could take you know an hour it just really depends on your internet speed and resources so we're going to pause this and resume when uh, it's all done downloading all right once the server gets done downloading all you have all the files you should see something like this file structure here now they do have an example server.batch file here which you can modify and create your own um, but it has just a lot of stuff in here so um, and if you just want to do a LAN setup you want to remember use LAN server instead of internet server so remember that um, but we already have a batch file that's already created for us so let's go ahead and utilize that right now which is this here and it's very simple it's just like the file we just opened but it's just I removed all the comments and just made it very simple I'm um, just made it very simple so we just did echo off starting this particular batch file and we want to make sure we do plus internet server and then slash whatever we want our folder to be called what it's going to be added into this directory here so i'll show you what i mean so let's go ahead and start this up so before we do that we need to copy this batch file first into our structure so we're going to go ahead and copy that in there now let's go ahead and double click on our shortcut here that says start server and you can see it's starting that server and let's go back here and go into server now we should have a new folder here here shortly yep there we go great tech gaming which is what we named it in this batch file here and then once that is created we can go ahead and go into this file go to server and it automatically creates a commands dot dat now this is where you're going to want to put uh, like your server name uh, port number you're going to use all that good information so we already have one generated here and like i said this will be in that zip file that you download in the description of this video so like for example name and then the name of the server that's going to show up in the server browser as you're trying to find a server on the game on turn. So you, here you can set the map port, the mode, easy, medium, difficulty there. The owner, this is important. You, you can use your Steam ID for that. So then you can do admin commands while you're in game. So that's a very helpful command. So you can set your Steam ID here. So then while you're in game, you can do admin commands. The welcome is okay. This will spawn in game what your server's all about. And then max player count, of course, that's important on depending on how many people you want to join that server so you can set that there as well there's other variables that you can set in here but like i said these are the most common ones so i just literally threw this together real quick so let's go ahead and close out of this and we're going to want to copy this into this because right here the file that it generates is just blank so that's going to be very helpful so let's go ahead and copy our commands into here hit replace now you're going to want to of course shut off the server and then boot it back on for it to see reflect those changes so let's go ahead and close it out now let's start it back up and then you're going to see in the menu here title you're going to see the name of the server 
server, which is what we named it. So perfect. So once we have this all done, you think, hey, I'm good to go. I got my port and you can see the variables here. You can see it's sending all these variables, the port, game mode, all that stuff. So that's perfect. Um, but then you're thinking like, okay, I'm all done. You know, let's join in the server. Well, you're not done yet. You need to actually go into, depending on if it's Linux, you know, server, Windows 10, whatever, you need to get into your firewall because now you got to allow this port to go out so people can actually communicate to it, right? And you're going to want to do this in your firewall too that you have on your network. So if it's a local server, not like a public IP, you're going to have to set um, a firewall rule in your firewall to point this port to this local IP, right? So we already created these firewall rules, but like I said, it's very simple. Just go to inbound rules, right click, hit new rule, name it whatever you want, click on port, and then you're going to want to, depending on what port we use, so let's go back to our command and see what port we use. I think it's just the default 2705, uh, there we go, 2015. So we just paste that in there. You're going to want to do TCP and UDP, so hit next, allow this connection, select all those, we'll just name it test. And like I said, you're going to want to do that again, new rule, and we're going to want to do UDP this time. So paste that in, make sure you select the UDP, hit next next and you know you name it whatever you want like i said we already created this these rules so i'm going to just delete these i just want to show you step by step on how to create that so you can see our udp and tcp are down here if you double click you can see i actually did more than that port because i was going to actually run two servers on this particular uh box so that's why i did uh 27015 27016 because it's going to allow this port and that port at the same time using tcp to this machine so once you have that done now you can see my ip address here is is a local IP. So that's a slash 24 subnet. So 192.168.8.11. So now I can actually go onto my gaming machine right now, load up a unturn and connect to this locally. But okay, that's great. But what if I want my friends that are like in a whole different state to connect? Well, now you have to actually go to your firewall, whether that be a Sonic wall, a Netgear, a Linksys, you know, whatever it might be, you want to get into that firewall. It could be a Comcast router, you know, whatever it is, you want to get into that router and you want to open up port 27015 and point it to this IP address, which is 8.11. Once you do that, then you can have anyone connect to the server. It's that easy. So let's go ahead and we're going to minimize this and we're going to connect to our gaming machine and we're going to actually see if we can connect to the server now. All right, you guys, we have Unturn loaded up on our machine that is on the same network. So we're going to go ahead and just hit play, hit connect. And like I said, we just put in that static IP. It's a local IP because I'm on the same network as this IP. So I'll be able to connect to it no problem we put in our default port hit connect and ooh, there we go we got great tech gaming 01 that's perfect we got the map washington so we are know we are on the right server here now we hit join and see if it connects and looks like we're loading in looks like it worked you guys awesome so like i said if you want someone to connect to it via outside of your network you have to go into that uh firewall that you have on your network whether that being a verizon box a comcast box or maybe you bought your own which is maybe a netgear or a linksys or something else you have to go in there and you guys say port 27015 forward it to the ip address of your server or if it's in the cloud that already has this public ip you don't need to do all that nonsense and you just go into windows firewall and open it up and and it's done um but yeah it looks like it's working you know i have no problems it's, everything's loading up good but yeah there you guys have it if you guys have any questions or anything else that you want me to show you please leave it in the comments below this video and i uh, hope you have a great one